So, hi everyone, I'm Max from the Honeynord chapter. I joined Honeynet two years ago as a GSOC student and worked on HoneyProxy then, which is now part of MittenProxy and which I'm going to give a demo about. So, what is MittenProxy? MittenProxy is an HTTP man and the middle proxy that is SSL capable, so you can intercept SSL traffic. Uh, Mitten proxy can modify traffic, replay traffic, or you can save conversations to disk and to read them at any later point in time. So that's more or less a generic debugging, pen testing, or analysis tool, and it comes in basically two flavors. So Mitten proxy itself is interactive and console-based, whereas we have Mitten dump as well which you would usually run unsupervised on a server. So we call it like TCP dump for HTTP in a way. So let's lay the little dragon first. I have a small demo setup where we have an Android client and an own cloud server and mid proxy in the middle. So you see the Android VM on the bottom right and mid proxy in the background. And now if, so this is obviously playback, but we'll switch to live stuff later on. If you now open the own cloud client, you'll see the initial traffic up there, the HTTP method, the um, host and port, and the path. So if you know own cloud a bit, or if you know web dev, you see that this is web dev traffic. And now we're going to open the file and just add some random text. And as soon as we save this, uh, we see the synchronization traffic in Mitten Proxy. So just a few generic requests, and then we see the put request, which presumably does the actual upload. So let's have a look. You can just press Enter to see the details. And here you see the HTTP headers at the top. Julian all just try to see what's in the basic auth. Forget it, that's just demo stuff. Um, and here's the request body where you see the message we entered into the text file. Same for the response body where we have no content but a bunch of headers. So this works for all kind of flows. If we have a look at the prop find request down there, um, we see it's XML. So if you look at that with Wireshark, you will just see a single long string Written proxy detects, hey, this is XML, and we format it accordingly. So this is all a little, little bit passive, right? So let's do something more interesting, and just let's go into the put request again and modify the request body. So you just add a second random line of text and press R. And as soon as we press R, we see here at the top, the request has been replayed. And Mitten Proxy takes the original requests and sends it with the new content to the server. So you see in the web UI of OwnCloud, the file has been refreshed, the new file has been uploaded. So this is usually pretty handy to test any kind, test any kind of web services or APIs or whatever. Let's have a second look. You can't just only add the request body, but you can edit other attributes as well. So we'll take the headers and just remove the authorization stuff. And well, obviously that should result in some error, which means unauthorized. And we can see as soon as we hit replay again, that up there, that the 401 unauthorized and the request didn't get through. So replay is one really useful feature of Mitten Proxy, um, but probably there are a lot of use cases where replay itself doesn't work. So what you'll do then is interception. And to see how this works, let's just clean everything up and assume that is done, rename the file we created. Um, this is just normal web dev again. 
you will see first the head request, the new file name, does it already exist? No, it doesn't, so we send the move request. Now, if we replay a move request, that will obviously doesn't work because we've already moved the file. So what we do now is we add an interception filter and filter all requests with the move method. Mitten proxy has its own set of filters you can use to intercept traffic. And with the move filter in place, we rename it again. And you will see that the head request goes through as expected. But the movie request is still orange, so still intercepted, and nothing has been sent to the server. Now we can, of course, enter the request and just change the destination header, which says where the file should be moved to. And as soon as we update that, we accept the request, and if the request is Accept it, it gets sent to the server, the server renames the file and sends the response. So the own cloud client is a little bit buggy and, I mean, you can't read that anyway, can you? Probably not, but it doesn't detect that the request has been renamed, but if we do a refresh, we see that the file is actually renamed. So, all this is pretty basic stuff you would accept from every kind of proxy software, so Burp does this, Fiddler does this, Child's proxy does this. So the question might be, why middle proxy? And this part is a little bit more subjective, and I'd like to share the point why I think that middle proxy is really cool and mostly more useful than the other tools. So the first thing is that middle proxy is scriptable and hackable. What that means is we have a very simple Python scripting API, and you can just write very, well, trivial manipulation scripts to uh, modify request contents. I think we'll do, what says the time, a quick live demo to see how this works. So, thank you, PowerPoint. We basically have our script. You don't have script file? Yes, you have script file. We have our script file here, and you just define functions that hook into several points. So in this case, we use a response function, which can be used to modify and intercept the response, so whatever you can do with the client as well. So let's just say for the moment, um, if the flow response content type is an image. We'll do some fancy magic and say rotate the image. Now how that function works is another point, but as soon as we save that and just run middle dump in this case. We can just have our browser here, which is configured to use the client. And now we open the website, which looks as usual, but if you look a little bit closer, you see this is a JPEG image, and I messed up with the sponsors. So, sorry for that. This is not meant to be bad in any way. Okay, so you see the scripting interface is trivial and simple to use, and probably very useful for many instances. So, next to the, I think that's the backup slide. Get out. The next point is that we have the scripting interface, but apart from that, the Midden proxy core is pretty flexible. So um, Midden proxy and Midden dump are based on Libum proxy, which is a proxy library for interception proxies. Um, when the go to, go to fail Apple bug was released, um, 
my co-author just implemented go to fail in less than a day for Mitten Proxy that so that you can use Mitten Proxy to intercept iPhones and iPads and so on using the go to fail bug. And similar is Heartbleed, so when the Heartbleed vulnerability was released, it took me about 30 minutes to perform Heartbleed attacks on clients. So quite useful if you do some low-level stuff and need access to the source code, so you can hack your way here, just like you want. Practical example of living proxy in use, this is Netograph. Netograph is a privacy visualization stuff, and you see basically a request to the, the Jarvian in the middle and all the um, HTTP requests that are caused by that. So um, you can really use that for larger scale things as well. It scales pretty well, actually. Yeah. Um, flexible means we have four operating modes. So regular proxy, which is normal. Then we have transparent proxy, which you can use um, on the network layer so that you don't have to configure your clients. I don't know if anyone is into Android stuff. Older versions of Android were just unable to accept proxies, so this, this came pretty handy. We have reverse proxy mode, I think. I don't have to explain what a reverse proxy is. Basically, you represent the server. And lastly, we have upstream proxy mode, which, well, other people create rock chains, we create proxy chains um, somehow in that way. Okay, um, what says the time? <coughs> time says I have maybe a minute. Um, so, Minimum Proxy was originally developed by Aldo Cortesi, started in 2010. Then, as explained, came my Google Summer of Code in 2012, where I forked everything, created a nice web UI on top of it. And in the next GSOC, I've already mainly worked on Minimum Proxy, and we are currently here somewhere. And in the next release, we'll hopefully have the work from Honey Proxy and Minimum Proxy itself. So this is Honey Proxy, which is a web UI on top of Mitten Proxy. So you can actually use that, but in a few months, you will have the new web UI, which is, I think, at least it looks better than the console UI. So last thing, if you care about numbers, we had about 100,000 downloads last year. We have 45 contributors so far to the GitHub repository and 104 pull requests. So I think that's pretty impressive. And I'm really too happy to work on this project with the support from HoneyNet. Questions? Sure. So the question was, if you update the headers, mm -hmm. then what should happen? The content line. If you, if you change, for example, the cost parameter. Sure. Uh, so if you change the request body or response body, we automatically detect that and update the content length. You can manually overwrite that, but that's just convenience, I think. Yes. Then if you, oh, no, that's, that's. Further questions? Is it feasible to integrate it uh, with, uh, for example, the Taku sandbox to use as a, well, Taku, for example, already has a pickup uh, interface. Well, yep. But this will give uh, also uh, what we call API interface. So you can of course part mitten proxy in front of Kaku box just separate. Mm -hmm. That works so far, but we are kind of investigating what we can do here. So hopefully we'll see something there very soon. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? If so, please chat with me offline.